Hi everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be exploring an example of a steel beam column check. So let's take a look at the given information. Here we are told to determine if the W10 by 49 is adequate for the applied loading. The steel is A992 and bending is about the strong axis. And then we're also told that lateral bracing is provided at the supports only. So these are these little red X's here. So again, this is lateral bracing that um, is kind of coming in and out of the screen at you. Uh, and they're only provided at the support. So you have no lateral bracing. There, there's nothing in the span of this member that is preventing it from... Um, you know, deforming laterally in and out of the page only at the supports. And that's gonna, you know, be an important thing that comes into play later in our solution. And then of course, we're being told to use LRFD. So under solution, we'll go ahead and get started. We need to factor our loads, okay? We need to factor our service loads using LRFD, okay? And so if you notice, since we only have dead and live loads, we have two load combinations that um, we should check. Load combo one is U equals 1.4 dead, and then load combo two is U equals 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. So we're gonna check both of these load combinations for both of the load types, the axial load and the transverse load. So let's look at them one at a time. Let's start with the axial load, okay? So load combo one would then say P sub U is 1.4 P dead. And uh, load combo two would say P sub U is 1.2 P dead plus 1.6 P live. So substituting in these values appropriately, again, we're looking at the axial loads only. Um, our first load combination would give us a value of uh, 49 kips, and then our second load combination would give us a load of 202 kips. And of course, um, that is the controlling load combination for axial load. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for the transverse loads, loads is plural, combo one, would be F sub U is 1.4 F dead. And then combo two would be F sub U is 1.2 F dead plus 1.6 F live. And um, looking at these, let's see, 1.4 times five is seven kips. And then for combo two, we'll have 1.2 times five plus 1.6 times 10. And so we'll have 22 kips for load combo two. So um, these are our governing loads. Um, now with the transverse loading specifically, that transverse load is gonna cause an internal uh, bending moment in M sub U that we need to check. Again, it's a beam column, so we're gonna need to check uh, its, its uh, applied moment against its moment capacity. So we can say M sub U, Let's color coordinate here. We're gonna say M sub U is gonna be F sub U L over four. Um, so um, how do I know that? Well, again, if you wanted to sketch a little shear and moment diagram of this member, treating it as a simply supported beam with the point load right in the middle, you can draw a shear diagram, which would you know kind of have this shape. And then you would have a moment diagram, which would have this shape. And then you'd be able to um, show that the maximum moment at the mid span is is like PL over four, okay, or FL over four. If you can't see that um, now, then again, pause the video, take some time, sketch that out and see where this formula comes from, okay? But basically when you have a simply supported beam with a point load only at the middle um, that's flexing it, then you have the maximum moment is, is that point load times the length divided by four. So if we, um, if we punch this through, we'll have 22 times 16 over four. And of course that's 88 kip feet. So what we need to end up checking this uh, member for is an axial compressive load of 202 kips. Again, that's compression and MU of 88 kip feet. That's what we're checking the member for, okay? So, um, 
So that these are our, our factored, our LRFD factored loads. Now what we need to get is our strengths, okay? Our, our resistances, okay? So um, let's, let's do that now. Let's say uh, LRFD, oh, we'll change colors now. I wanna say LRFD factored strengths, okay? Um, so the first thing we need to keep in mind is that um, our effective length factor, which we call K in column design, is 1.0. How do we know that? Well, this member is pinned at its ends, and so when you have a pin-pin um, compression member, your effective length factor is 1.0. So that means that our effective length, LC, which is KL, of course, is just 16 feet, all right? Now, um, another thing to keep in mind is the unbraced length. L sub B is what we call the unbraced length. And notice that in our given information, our unbraced length is gonna be 16 feet. Why? We are explicitly told lateral bracing is provided at the supports only. So our unbraced length um, is the whole 16 feet, all right? So um, our own brace length is gonna be 16 feet as well, all right? Um, why do we need to know this? Well, in order to find our factored strengths, we're going to use AISC table 6-2. So if you get your steel manual out, maybe pause the video, pull your steel manual out, we're gonna go to chapter six, which is combined loading, and we're specifically looking at table 6-2. Now, um, table 6-2 in chapter six is perfect for combined loading scenarios, axial compression with flexure, okay? You could get the same values from chapters three and chapter four. Remember, chapter three is on is on beams and bending. Chapter four is on uh, columns or uh, axial compression, okay? Um, but chapter six is great because it has pretty much all of the same information all in like one-stop shop, okay? So I'm gonna use chapter six, uh, table six dash two. And so if you're looking at that, um, you find the W10 by 49, all right? Um, in my steel manual, it's page six dash 94. And um, if you look in the middle of that table, it says the effective length LC with respect to the least radius of gyration or unbraced length LB. And it's got these kind of bold um, length values in, one, in the center column of that table. So I'm gonna go to 16, okay? Um, an L value, L sub C, and L sub B value of 16. So using L from an LC value of 16 feet, I can get my phi C P N value um, on the left side of, of the table for a W10 by 49 is 427 kips, okay? And then using an LB value, which happens to be the same um, length of 16, my phi B M N value uh, moving to the right uh, for a W10 by 49, move to the right of that table, is 201 kip feet, okay? And, um, and so these are, my, these are my LRFD factored strengths, okay? Now, the next thing we need to make note of is that this phi BMN value is given for a CB of 1.0. Do we have a CB of 1.0? Not really, okay? So if you um, turn to AISC table 3-1 um, for a simply supported member with lateral bracing only at its ends, then you'll have a CB value of 1.32. So what we can now do is we can say CB phi b m n is 1.32 times 201 kip feet. So we're allowed to um, ramp up our flexural strength a bit based on um, the lateral bracing that we are provided. So that gives me a value of 265.3 
kip feet. So now you may be thinking, oh wow, my, my strength has gone up, I'm in good shape. Well, you're not done yet, you gotta check one more thing, okay? Um, this is this cannot be, this value CB, FEBMN cannot be greater than the plastic moment, okay? So we need to make a note of that. We need to say CB, FEBMN cannot be greater than, it's gotta be less than or equal to FBMP, the plastic moment. You you can't exceed the plastic flexural strength capacity even when you apply CB, the CB factor of 1.32 in this case, okay? So how do we determine the plastic flexural strength capacity? Again, I'm still using um, AISC table 6.2. So um, using that same table, AISC table 6.2, we can say for an unbraced length value of zero, FBMN equals FBMP. And entering into that table, we see that the plastic moment capacity is 227 kip feet. So that's something to remember. Um, for an unbraced length of zero, then your uh, flexural, your factor of flexural strength is the plastic moment, okay? And so finally, we can end up, um, when we end up using these values into our interaction equations, we will use the following. We're gonna say, use phi CPN of 427 kips and uh, phi BMN as this 227 kip feet in the interaction equations. Now we're ready to determine um, our appropriate interaction equation uh, to check if this beam column is, um, is adequate, all right? So from one of our previous videos, we summarized the governing equations. The first thing I'm gonna do is calculate PU over VCPN. And uh, my PU value from earlier, I'm gonna scroll on up, was 202 kips. So we're gonna say 202 kips divided by VCPN was 427 kips. And when I punch this through, I get a number equal to 0.473, okay? Now, this value is bigger than or equal to 0.2, so that means that we have a quote-unquote large axial load, and so the interaction equation we're gonna check is PU over phi C P N plus 8 ninths times M U X over VB M N X is less than or equal to 1.0. And again, um, you know, if you look at the general interaction equations given summarized in my previous video or in chapter H of AISC, they're expressed in um, biaxial terminology. But the bending, there is no bending about the y about the y's um, cross section axis. So. It says in this problem specifically, you only have bending about the strong axis. That's why that M sub Y moment term that's ordinarily inside this parentheses is not here right now, okay? So let's go ahead and evaluate this. Um, this left-hand side of the equation, I'm gonna call that LHS. That's gonna be this left-hand side of the equation. Um, well, you already calculated PU over phi CPN, that's 0.473, and then we'll say plus eight ninths times MUX uh, from earlier is, let's scroll back up and remind, remind ourselves what it was. Um, that is this 88 kip feet because we said this MU is bending about the X axis. So that's gonna be 88 kip feet. And then uh, phi B M N X is uh, our plastic moment here. That's the 227 kip feet. So the left-hand side of this interaction relationship is going to be the following. Let's punch this in in the calculator. All right, so when I punch all this through in my calculator, I get um, point, 
eight one eight. Okay, I'm gonna punch that in one more time because I always like to check myself. What do they say? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. So 88 over 227 times 8 ninths, and then plus you know 202 over 427. Yep, 0.818 is what I get. And so since 0 0.818 is less than or equal to 1.0, this member is adequate for the applied loads. Okay, and so that's it. That's uh, the conclusion of this example. Thanks for watching.